you're doing everything right. You are tracking ovulation, you're taking your prenatal vitamins, you're doing everything that you're supposed to, but you are still not getting pregnant. What if the very leggings that you are wearing for your fertility boosting outfits could be the cause of your infertility? I'm a fertility doctor here to tell you that it's not just what you put in your body, but what you are wearing on your skin that could be impacting your chances of getting pregnant. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people get pregnant for over 20 years. If this is the first time that you are finding the channel, welcome, be sure and subscribe so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. There's two other ways to stay informed. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter, link in the description below, and you can listen to my weekly Brave and Curious podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts with interviews with experts in the field and deep dive into discussions and things that we wanna learn all about. Today, we are talking about how some chemicals that are in some of the clothing that we're wearing could be impacting our reproductive health, specifically synthetic materials that can be full of chemicals that are endocrine disruptors that can impact our egg quality, miscarriage risk, and sperm health. Now, I don't want you to throw out all of your leggings or your workout clothes, but I just want to increase awareness and help you make safer choices in the future. So today we've got three main topics. Number one, we're gonna talk about the chemicals that are in a lot of synthetic fabrics in the clothing that we wear every day. Number two, we're gonna go over the evidence, the research behind what some of these chemicals that are found in our clothing, how they can impact reproductive health. And then number three, we're gonna go over tips on how to find safer clothing and protect us from exposure to these chemicals to improve our overall reproductive health and well-being. So topic number one, what is in your leggings or those clothes that have synthetic fabrics? Many of our workout clothes and a lot of the clothes that we wear have synthetic fabrics that are full of chemicals to treat the fabric. These fabrics can be polyester, nylon, or lycra that has spandex, and these fabrics can be treated with chemicals like phthalates, PFAS, which is also called forever chemicals, antimicrobial agents like triclosan, and azo dyes that can release carcinogenic amines from the clothing as we wear them. These aren't just buzzwords. These chemicals are endocrine disruptors and they can impact the way our hormones function, our hormone production, receptors of hormones, and our overall reproductive health and well being if they're found in high levels in our systems. High levels of a lot of these endocrine disruptors have been associated with longer time to getting pregnant, poor egg quality, poor sperm quality, miscarriage risk, lower chances of success with IVF. So an awareness of this is really important. Topic number two, let's go over what the research says. There are three main studies that I want to share with you. Study number one, preconception phthalate exposure and women's reproductive health. This was published in 2023 in the journal Environmental Health and Perspectives. The objective of this study was to look at the relationship between the levels of phthalate exposure in women as they were trying to conceive and the associated risk of infertility and miscarriage and poor reproductive health. The methods of this study include the fact that it was a prospective trial looking at over 1,200 women that were planning to conceive and they were having urine and blood samples checked regularly while they tried to conceive. 20 phthalate metabolites were measured in both urine and blood as these women were trying to conceive, and outcomes were time to pregnancy, miscarriage risk, and hormone levels for hormones like follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and some inflammatory biomarkers. Statistical models were used to associate it levels of phthalate exposure and reproductive outcomes. So what did they find? Higher levels of phthalates were associated with a longer time to conception or infertility. There was no real association with levels of phthalates and miscarriage risk. And higher levels of phthalates were associated with lower estrogen levels, altered follicle stimulating and luteinizing hormone levels, and higher levels of inflammatory markers like isoprostenes. Here is a visual. This is a graph showing the outcomes that were found. So this visual shows higher levels of certain phthalates are associated with lower fecundability or getting pregnant, like a higher chance of being infertile. 
The odds ratios are all below one with confidence intervals approaching but not exceeding one, indicating a statistically significant or borderline significant negative association with the ability to conceive. What this means is the more phthalate exposure, so in the higher quartiles, the longer it took to get pregnant. The authors conclude that preconception phthalate exposure may impair female fertility by reducing the likelihood of conception and altering reproductive hormone profiles and inflammatory markers. They then state these findings underscore the need for strategies to reduce environmental phthalate exposure, particularly during the sensitive preconception window. Study number two is looking at PFAS or the forever chemicals and their association with miscarriage risk. This was published in 2021 in the journal of scientific reports. The objective of the study was to investigate the association of exposure to PFAS, which is perfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS, in early pregnancy associated with an increased risk of sporadic first trimester miscarriage. The methods of this study was a case control trial in which 78 women that had first trimester miscarriage were compared to 1,400 women without a history of miscarriage. And looking at exposure of these women to PFAS, levels of PFAS in the women who had miscarriage and did not have miscarriage. These levels were measured around 10 weeks gestation of pregnancy. Statistics included logistic regression, controlling for maternal age, smoking history, and previous pregnancy history. The results showed that higher levels of PFAS were associated with a higher risk of miscarriage. Here's a graph showing the results. Here's a visual representation of the study's findings. It shows the adjusted odds ratio for miscarriage by quartile of PFAS exposure. As exposure increases from quartile two to quartile four, the risk of miscarriage also increases with statistically significant association in the highest quartile so the highest level of exposure to PFAS shared the highest risk of miscarriage. The authors conclude that maternal exposure to PFAS during early pregnancy was associated with an elevated increased risk of miscarriage in the patients that were studied in this study. This suggests a potential role of the environmental chemical exposures in early pregnancy, and they call for further study and further research into this, specifically how PFAS may impact the function of a placenta. Study number three is looking at phthalate exposure and IVF outcomes. This was published in 2020, and the objective was to look at at levels of phthalates as couples were going through an IVF cycle and associated reproductive outcomes from that IVF cycle like live birth. Participants that were studied included 56 of the women that were having an egg retrieval and 43 of their male partners. It was a prospective cohort study and samples were collected on the day of egg retrieval. Urinary levels of 11 phthalates were measured on this day. Outcomes were adjusted for confounding variables like age of the patients, BMI, and smoking status. Studies showed that higher levels of phthalates were associated with lower success with IVF. Here's a graph to show the results. This graph is basically showing that as the phthalate levels increase, there's a lower chance of having a live birth with IVF. Each bar represents the relative risk, meaning how likely pregnancy or live birth is compared to someone with lower phthalate levels. A number below one means a lower chance. So for example, women with higher levels of MB phthalate has a 43% lower chance of getting pregnant and men with a higher MEH phthalate have a 66% lower chance or a two thirds less likely chance of getting pregnant. In simple terms, the more phthalates, the lower chance of getting pregnant and having a live birth. The authors conclude that higher levels of phthalates in both male and female partners undergoing IVF are associated with lower live birth rates. So I know these are only three studies, but it's showing a lot of the chemicals that are in these synthetic fabrics that we use are using can be associated with poor reproductive health. So what do you do about it? Topic number three, how do we find safer clothing? I've got four tips for you. Number one, you can look for labels that certify that the fabrics are safe and without a lot of the chemicals that we've talked about today. There are two labels to look for. There's OEKO Tex Certified and GOTS Certified. And GOTS stands for Global Organic Textile Standard. These are international 
organizations that will come in and test the fabrics. And when you find these labels on their fabrics, they are saying that they are free of these certain chemicals. Um, I'll put the links to the websites of both of these companies and labels so you can learn more about exactly what they test for and how you can find brands that have been certified with this external third-party testing. Um, tip number two, you can look for clothes that are made with more natural fibers like cotton, bamboo, or tensile, which is a product that has much lower levels of spandex. Tip number three, avoid clothing that markets that it's anti-odor or moisture wicking. Unless you verify that the fabric is safe, that often means that it's treated with a lot of the chemicals that we talked about today. And tip number four, just wash your clothing before you wear it. You know, if you absolutely love your leggings and you're going to wear them and continue to wear them, fantastic. But just make sure you wash them before you wear them because the highest levels of chemicals are gonna be in that first wear directly from the factory. So let's recap. Many of the leggings and workout clothes and synthetic fabric made clothes that we wear are treated with chemicals that have been associated with endocrine disruption and poor reproductive health. We now know this. We've reviewed some of the evidence that is available. I want to reassure you that it's really patients only with the highest levels of exposure that really had the most detrimental outcomes in their reproductive health. We cannot completely avoid chemicals and plastics and endocrine disruptors in our everyday life, but we can make solid choices that decrease our exposure in order to improve not only our reproductive health, but our overall health and well-being. You have choices, now you have knowledge, and you can make safer choices in the future. I hope you found this helpful. I am not here to scare you. I am just trying to pass on knowledge and make you aware. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Be sure and subscribe to this channel to get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples. <laughs>